Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorporateReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, biotechnology and biomanufacturing to help us achieve our societal goals. We have got that story, plus enraged drunk high on lab-grown GMO blood shows his true colors. But first, U.S. Senate's CIA torture report to remain secret for national security. We grab this from 21stCenturyWire.com. Amid all their virtue signaling, we like to call it vert vulture signaling in media monarchy, and moralizing over all the alleged actions of its perceived enemies around the world, the American deep state is ever vigilant to cover up its own bipartisan war crimes. We have learned that a U.S. federal judge has ruled that a massive congressional report on the CIA's illegal war on terror torture program will remain classified, claiming American citizens have no right to see the controversial document, portions of which were already leaked to the public by a Democratic senator almost a decade ago. The report contains highly classified information about the CIA's detention and interrogation policies and procedures that would compromise national security if released, far outweighing the public's interest in disclosure. As the LA Times reports, the U.S. Senate does not have to release the full report detailing the Central Intelligence Agency's interrogation and detention program following the September 11, 2001 attacks a federal judge ruled last Thursday. Journalist Sean Musgrave sought the 6,700-page document citing a common law right of access to public records, the legal argument conceptually similar to the Freedom of Information Act. Congress, however, is not subject to the Freedom of Information Act, and the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit ruled in 2016 that the report was a congressional record. Musgrave's legal argument was made in an attempt to get around that limitation. District of Columbia District Judge Beryl Howell, James, who I immediately have to go look up because I immediately wonder, who's this person? Who are they married to? What have they been involved in? Beryl A. Howell, daughter of an Army officer married to Michael Rosenfeld, an executive propaganda producer at Disney's National Geographic TV. James, he helped executive produce 9-11, Where Were You?, and a bunch of other aliens and a bunch of bull plop Disney Nat Geo stuff. She was appointed by Bush Obama and involved in everything from the Digital Millennial Copyright Act, the hated DMCA, to defending the Patriot Act, to even working with the folks at the RIAA. She also, without a shred of irony, helped Senator Patrick Leahy fend off proposals to impose new limits on the Freedom of Information Act. Howell wrote that the government interest in keeping the information secret outweighs public interest, a public more interested, I guess, in the current thing. I stand with Martha's Vineyard, James, do you? Oh, absolutely. Yes. What's the current thing? Yes, I stand with that. Nonsense. All right. So to, just to set the table for people who don't know, this is about the 2014 Senate report that is 6,200 pages that has been and continues to be classified. So you, you plebs out there, can't see this. Uh, there was a 500-page executive summary that was released at the time, um, but the actual 6,200-page meat and potato report remains behind closed doors. But don't worry, guys. According to the LA Times, President Obama declared the full report, report part of his presidential records before he left office, which preserved a copy in the National Archives. So public requests for the document could trigger declassification starting in 2029. Just wait another decade, guys. You'll get this truth eventually, just like JFK and the Pfizer trial documents and everything, or the, you know, all of that stuff. It'll come out eventually once you're almost dead. Total, utter, outrageous nonsense. Um, but it just is, this is just a window into such a much larger and more important story. As people might know, I've been talking about this a bit lately, especially because, uh, as I say, I just released part three of the False Flags documentary, War of Terror, in that entire two hours as it was released, barely a mention of the illegal torture program, which is itself a travesty. That is such an important part of the entire fabrication of the War of Terror myth. And I'm glad that some people have picked up on it. For example, in my recent Blood on the C Cutting Room Floor uh, episode where I played some of the um, deleted scenes from the, the documentary, including one that touched on the torture, uh, Ji Jingping in the comment section said, uh, great episode in so many respects, but I was particularly struck by one point you made on torture, that it is a very poor way to get real information, but it is an excellent way to get false 
information that can then be shaped and molded to fit any narrative of your choosing. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, that is exactly the point of the illegal torture program. And it's actually a travesty that this hasn't been, that this isn't the the totally understood 100%. Yes, of course, that's what it was for. This isn't even controversial. Back in 2009, when the first Senate investigations were going, um, uh, Senator Levin, in commenting on a Senate Armed Services Committee report on torture, admitted that torture techniques were aimed at extracting false confessions. Yes, I will have the link uh, for that in case you didn't know about that. But yes, it's already been admitted. It's out in the open. Um, I will direct people back to my episode 27 of the Corporate Report podcast on Torture is Bad, where back in 2008, I laid out all the stuff that we knew at that time. And a lot of it still... I think, relevant to the the overall torture mm-hmm. story. But if you want the sort of the latest torture um, rela- related stories, uh, how about from just on September 11th, why the self-proclaimed 9-11 mastermind hasn't seen trial 21 years later? And they're talking about, well, there are a number of reasons, like when the government, you know, illegally bugged the uh, the courtroom and the and uh, some of the meeting rooms, and they tried to insert a, uh, a government plant in the defense team and all of this craziness that they've been doing with the KSM trial and others. But, oh yeah, and also the torture at the black sites, which is completely illegal and completely inadmissible. But don't worry, guys, the government redid the t- the uh, the interrogations with FBI not using torture. They did clean interrogations later on and got the exact same information. So it's all okay, right? They just can't actually quite bring it to court, even in their phony baloney kangaroo military tribunal that they're trying to run there. And I think that might be part of the point too, because they do not really want an actual real trial where there's going to be actual testimony that the public will ever get any to handle on. They want to make some sort of deal and sweep it under the rug so they can cement the um, the official phony baloney torture testimony derived official narrative of 9-11, which let's remind people that back in Again, over a decade ago, NBC News was reporting that over one quarter, over 25% of the footnotes in the 9-11 Commission report are sourced from torture testimony. But don't worry, guys, you can believe it. 9-11 A to Z mastermind, KSM, who, oh, by the way, also confessed to things he did not do under torture. But don't worry about that. We can documentally prove he did not have anything to do with this. He confessed to it under torture. He also confessed to 9-11 A to Z. But you can believe that, guys. This is such an important part of the entire War of Terror myth. I hope that... At the very least, people understand what this is about. It was never about getting information. It was always about getting false information that they could use to plant a false cookie crumb trail. And all of these provable conspiracies by the criminal factions of the American government don't get talked about as much as what do they serve up? Episodes of 24. James, this will not be the last time we mention, of course, the events of 9-11 on this episode. Uh, one other quick thing. Do we know who the Democratic senator was that leaked this in 2014? Uh, f- I-, I want to say that uh, Feinstein uh, helped get the executive summary released. Okay. I-, I believe. That's okay. She she does pop up in a little bit of the research. Diane Feinstein pops up along with, of course, <laughs> former senator from West Virginia, Jay Rockefeller, I believe, was also involved. That is how we get started here on episode 495 from New World Next Week. Our second story just keeps, again, I think it keeps all on a, on a similar path in a way. Biden uses executive order to institutionalize eugenics and transhumanism. We grab this from the always fantastic technocracy news. And again, as always, everything we say and play always included down in the show notes to continue the research for yourself. The National Biotechnology and Biomanufacturing Initiative was created by President Biden's executive order on September 12, 2022. It virtually guarantees that transhumanism and the genetic manipulation of citizens will be the main topic 
of the upcoming never-ending 2024 selection cycle. That executive order is tectonic in that it aligns and mandates all agencies to coordinate a whole-of-government approach to advance biotechnology and biomanufacturing to help us achieve our societal goals. And those real societal goals are mentioned right in the introduction of the executive order, and it might, as they note on technocracy.news, set your hair on fire. Quote, we need to develop genetic engineering technologies and techniques to be able to write circuitry for cells and predictably program biology in the same way in which we write software and program computers. Unlock the power of biological data, including through computing tools and artificial intelligence, and advance the science of scale up production while reducing the obstacles for commercialization so that innovative technologies and products can reach markets faster." End quote. The theft payer dollars stolen from me and uh, millions of other Americans, they're, that's what's going to pay for our transmogrification. You look up transmogrification, that means a complete change. Executive Order on Advancing Biotechnology and Biomanufacturing Innovation for a Sustainable, Safe, and Secure American Bioeconomy. Silly me, James. I actually tried to find the exact serial number of this executive order on Wikipedia, but what do you know? It's not on there at all, James. Uh, yeah, interesting, isn't it? I wonder why they're trying to <laughs> keep this you undercover. Can, but, huh? oh, you, but you can find all the bad stuff that Orange Man Bad did. That comes up first in the results. If you go list of active, active executive orders, it'll go Donald Trump executive orders. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well... Keeping that in mind, uh, hats off to Patrick Wood, as you say, for writing, I think, an important uh, article here that gets to some of the important points and breaks down why they are important. Um, hats off also to Ryan Christian, the last American vagabond, who's been covering it on his daily wrap up and did a great breakdown of this and the various points related to it. But um, all of that is important. I will th obviously that'll be in the show notes. So people can follow it and, and delve into this. I think the real takeaway of this at the base, at the very bottom, is that ultimately transhumanist push towards the the breaking down of the vitalist philosophy and ideology. And for people who don't know or remember about that, I would direct them to my Biodigital Convergence Bombshell Document Reveals the True Agenda article from last year, where I noted in the uh, that Biodigital Convergence uh, document from the government of Canada um, they actually state, as we continue to better understand and control the mechanisms that underlie biology, we could see a shift away from vitalism, the idea that living and non-living organisms are fundamentally different because they are thought to be governed by different principles. Instead, the idea of biology as having predictable and digitally manageable characteristics may become increasingly common as a result of living in a biodigital age. If that does not send shivers down your spine, you are not thinking correctly. That is absolutely bone chilling because they are talking about the merging of humans and machines and they are actively working towards it through things like this. A whole of government effort now directed at biotechnology, bioeconomy. It sounds, I don't know, it sounds neutral. It sounds sci-fi-y, whatever. I'm sure it's good. No, this is nightmare fuel stuff. But don't worry, it's about cancer moonshot. We're gonna, we're gonna get rid of cancer by reprogramming cancer cells like we would reprogram uh, software code. Where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, the software of life. Moderna, mRNA, yes, of course, it all goes back to that because it all is swirling around this, which all feeds into the biosecurity state, which at base is designed to hurt us like cattle's in a pen towards the transhumanist nightmare future where uh, our bodies will be hardware to be reprogrammed at will by these goons who seek to steward over the human population. And I am not... I'm not overplaying this. If anything, I'm underplaying it. Again, mm -hmm. see Ryan Christian's uh, daily wrap-up um, summary of this where he plays the, uh, the, he cites the article about the guy saying, well, you know, we might have to take these, um, these 
uh, moral bio enhancements that could be possible in the future. And we might have to do them covertly to the population because, you know, people might resist this, but we know it's for their good. So we'll do it to them covertly. And then they're talking about all of the ways that they can literally re-engineer the, us from the genome up through this new mRNA technology and other such things. Absolutely incredibly bone chilling when you put the emphasis on the right syllable as Patrick Wood does, as Ryan Christian does, as other researchers who have their heads screwed on straight are doing with this incredibly important topic. So yes, I mean, Wiki and others might be trying to occlude this from your attention, but we're here to bring it for you uh, to you and the links will be in the show notes. I hope people will follow through and start to read up, read up about this. So they use the words biotechnology, biomanufacturing, and bioeconomy. I haven't run the control F search, but do they ever use the word biosecurity? Or is that just, is that the new chemtrails of the crazy conspiracy set? I wonder. Let's do it live. Biosecurity. Ah, yes. We need to invest in and promote biosafety and biosecurity to ensure that biotechnology is developed and deployed in ways that align with the United States principles and values and international best practices, which in a way is a coded way of saying this is incredibly dangerous stuff. And if you tinker with the genome of humanity in a way that, oops, oh, well, there goes the species. This is the type of stuff we're talking about. But, oh, don't worry, they'll have best practices and security around it. <sighs> Are you still talking about COVID? Get over it, man. They got us. So now watch. Watch this be another scenario played out along two-party illusion lines where one puppet president loads the gun and then America's next top puppet president pulls the trigger and no one notices. But yeah, speaking of September executive orders, it's just not September these last 21 years. If whatever puppet president is reading the cue cards, then it is time, James, to renew the 9-11 emergency declaration. Notice on the continuation of the national emergency with respect to certain terrorist attacks. Martial law can buy a beer now. That's right. They have continued to kick the can down the road and have renewed the 9-11 state of emergency for 21 years straight. Democrats and Republicans can always agree on, I guess, subjugating the masses. James, as I was messaging you earlier, you're not going to sneak it on me this time. I was just thinking about September, thinking about executive orders. <gasps> oh, that's right. Surely Brandon renewed the 9-11 emergency order, and indeed he did. Uh, in other news, since we've been off the air, Russia's drafting for the military for the first time since World War II. Oh, yeah, and uh, the queen is dead. Our third and final story on this New World Next Week, episode 495, a strange one I covered this morning on my morning monarchy. Beyond Meat Executive Bites Man's Nose Outside Football Game. You can't make this up. AKA Enraged Drunk High on Lab Grown GMO Blood shows his true colors. Beyond Meat suspends COO, the chief operating officer, after arrest for allegedly biting a man's nose. Beyond Meat said its operating chief, Doug Ramsey, has been suspended after he was arrested Saturday evening for allegedly punching a man and biting his nose. Doug Ramsey, 53, was charged with terroristic threatening, which I think comes from, from the good old Patriot Act, which I believe uh, Judge Beryl Howes, a big defender of, charged with terroristic threatening and third-degree battery and booked in the Washington County Jail in Fayetteville, Arkansas, after allegedly assaulting a driver in a parking garage near Razorback Stadium. Ramsey allegedly punched through the back of the windshield of a Subaru after it made contact with the front tire of Ramsey's car, this all according to preliminary police reports obtained by CNBC. Subaru owner then got out of his car, and Ramsey allegedly started punching him and bit his nose, quote, ripping the flesh on the tip of his nose, end quote, according to the report. The victim and a witness also alleged that Ramsey told the Subaru owner that he would kill him. You know, you always yell that, and that goes back to even to the fundamentals of 12 angry men. I'm going to kill you. You don't really mean that, do you? Ramsey has been Beyond Meat's chief operating officer since way back in December. 
The news of his arrest after a University of Arkansas football game brought more scrutiny to the vegan food company, which has been struggling with disappointing sales and investor skepticism, not to mention, of course, consumer skepticism, over its long-term growth prospects. The stock has fallen 75% this year, dragging its market cap down to $1.02 billion. Just three years ago, the company was valued at $13.5 billion. Prior to joining Beyond Meat, Doug Ramsey spent 30 years at Tyson Foods overseeing its poultry and McDonald's businesses. Beyond Meat was relying on his experience to help the company successfully pull off big launches, particularly with fast food companies. You know, the health food companies like Taco Bell and McDonald's, you know, those places that gave you free stuff if you took the weird gene therapy carrot. Doug Ramsey did not respond to a request for comment from CNBC. Now, that CNBC article is way better than the CNBC video I'll include a link to. Three minutes of three derps on the squawk box making excuses for this guy. That was like torturing my listeners this morning on the morning show. Beyond Meat COO Doug Ramsey arrested, accused of biting man's nose. And yes, I'll also include the links to the health food companies like Krispy Kreme and McPink Slime paying people to get that carrot. Going back to March of 2021, free donuts, popcorn, McDonald's, businesses pile on more perks for getting vaccinated. James, what a strange, strange time. And this is real dumb. I call it low-hanging lulls on the morning monarchy. But how could we not just shine a little bit of a light on this story as it relates to the just the lab-grown, eat-the-greta-bugs eugenics push? Yeah. Can't wait for the fact check on this one. Well, actually, it's just the actions of a COO, and it has nothing to do with the corporate values of the wonderful Beyond Meat company, whatever, Beyond whatever, whatever it's called. Total nonsense. Crazy story. Um, I'm sure it does reflect on the craziness that is behind this agenda. But on a tangentially related note, um, speaking of garbage processed synthetic food that isn't food, uh, a couple of notes related to a, uh, a rival company, I guess. Impossible Foods. Um, a couple of stories from GM Watch. Uh, first of all, from earlier this month, 13th of September, Impossible Foods seeks EU and UK approval for its GMO fake meat bleeding ingredient. <laughs> I can barely get through that sentence without retching. And then the follow-up from just the other day, rat feeding study suggests the Impossible Burger may not be safe to eat. <laughs> yeah, you think? Anyway, I, I would hope our audience doesn't need to be told this. And it looks like the public doesn't need to be told it because, of course, all of these types of fake synthetic garbage processed non-GM monstrosities are failing in the court of public opinion and people are not buying them as has been pointed out many times for the good uh unfortunately however it'll go down in what i don't know some sort of soylent green type scenario they won't force it on people they won't make you take it they'll just destroy the rest of the food systems to where you're going oh man is is it tuesday yet i think that's soylent green day We are obviously in the new place. I'm in a big echoey new studio. I only got one carpet beneath me. I haven't hung up all the soundproofing stuff because I've been mowing the lawn and plunging things. And I even tossed a dead mouse into the yard today. That's what it's like taking over a house. We have got our own place. It is amazing. We are very stoked. There's going to be a lot of stuff to kind of kind of work on here. We might get our butts kicked in a fantastic way where we are forced to learn how to do a few more things for ourselves in a town with James, a population that's less than a thousand. We have the new PO box set up and it is the low, low number of PO box 189. If that lets you know in another way of what a small town that we are in that is posted to the website. We have gotten most of the new orders already sent out from the new world next week store, the store and the snail mail. Both are almost pretty much caught up on I have been back on air live and loud this week at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. James, what's new with you, buddy, in this time we've been off? Yeah, nothing that exciting. Um, I'm just sitting here <laughs> plugging away. So uh, obviously the 
part three of the documentary was the big release, but, uh, and then I took a few days off and now we're back to the grindstone. So back to business as usual. Speaking of which, yes, for people who haven't taken note of that, you do have a new PO box. Do not send anything to the old PO box address. The address will be on screen. The address is on your website. The address is on my site. Use the new PO box. Do not send to the old PO box because it will get lost. And I know some people send cash or whatever. It will get lost. So um, keep that in mind. Also, I was thinking of ending today on a sarcastic thank you note to all of those wonderful and devoted fans uh, who wrote in uh, over the past few weeks, where is New World next week? What happened to Pilato? What's going on? <laughs> who somehow, despite being devoted fans, did not notice as we talked for week after week about the move and the, specifically said on the last one, you're going to be moving. We won't be back for a while. <laughs> But instead of the sarcastic thank you, that's giving into the wrong side. Let's, I'll give a genuine thank you to the people who did patiently wait and knew that exactly what was happening because you do listen to what we're saying and you do pay attention and do support our work uh, through moral support as spreading the word and of course the monetary support as well as buying the DVDs and the shirts and the hats and whatever. Honestly, thank you to all of you out there uh, who make this possible. So um, we'll end it on a happier note today. All right, buddy. Thanks so much, James. Thank you.